I will be sharing all of my positive and not so positive thoughts about this book. It wasn't anything super special trying to mentally prepare myself for all the emotions. <laughs> My name is Sabine and welcome to another video. I am so excited for today's reading vlog because I'll be reading my favorite author's books and that is Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think the majority of us here in the book community are extremely excited for the release of Malibu Rising. I believe this one is coming out, depends on where you live, at the end of May or the beginning of June and I am just really grateful that Penguin Random House sent me this arc and I got to read it early and I will be sharing all of my positive and not so positive thoughts about this book. But because in Malibu Rising we follow the offspring of famous singer Mick Riva, who is one of Evelyn husbands, Evelyn Hugo's husbands. Wow, <laughs> that was difficult to say. I really wanted to give this book a reread. I've read it previously in 2019 and it has become one of my favorite books and I just wanted to give it another reread to refresh my memory. I will be sharing with you my experience of rereading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. In this story, we follow Monique Grant. She is a relatively unknown, like, news reporter, journalist, and Evelyn Hugo who is a really famous like Hollywood star. She was super well known, especially from the 1950s until the 1980s. She wants Monique Grant to write her autobiography. And Monique is like, sure, but like, why me? <laughs> and throughout this story, you get to know Evelyn's life and her whole story throughout those seven husbands. And it deals a lot with, of course, fame, being in the entertainment industry in Hollywood, but mostly it's a story about love with friendships, but also forbidden love. And throughout this story, you kind of like switch between the now in which Monique Grant is interviewing Evelyn Hugo. And she doesn't know why, but Evelyn keeps hinting that when she tells the true nature of why she specifically wanted Monique to interview her. Monique will not want to do anything with Evelyn Hugo anymore. So that is kind of like the mystery, the intrigue that truly, besides Evelyn's life, keeps you wanting to know more and wanting to read more. So, so let's see how my reread went of this book. Hi guys, so the lighting is shit. <laughs> But we're just gonna roll with it. I've decided that for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I will like let you know my thoughts and opinions, non-spoilery thoughts and opinions throughout every single husband that Evelyn has had. I just finished the little tiny, tiny part about poor Ernie Diaz, the first husband that Evelyn has. And in this little part, you kind of get introduced to her and her spirit and just she knows what she wants and she is trying every single thing to get that thing. And on the one hand, it's super inspirational, but then on the other hand, she's going through actually really some things that can be very traumatizing. And one thing that she, I think, often uses to like get her way in the Hollywood industry, in the celebrity business is through her like sex appeal and her charm. And she's already stated that she has chosen to have like sex with certain people high in the industry in order to get her where she wants to be, which is like a really fucked up mentality that happens in like the filming or entertainment industry. So that's a very interesting and heartbreaking topic to like read about. And right now we are gonna go on to goddamn Don Atler. And I'm also listening to the audiobook, which is perfect because I'm currently finishing up ordering my new bookmarks for my Etsy update. By the time that this video is uploaded, I will have everything set and ready. It has probably launched already. So if you want to check out the bookmarks and bookmarks with special effects and stickers and hardcover notebooks that I have created for my new Etsy update, links to my shop are in the description box down below. And if you place an order, that honestly means the world to me because you are making my dream of putting my designs and my shop out there true, which is amazing. It would mean a lot to me if you check out my shop, but I'm so excited to continue on with this story and just <sighs> Taylor Jenkins' Reid way of storytelling is just so beautiful. Like that woman has a talent for writing. And I know Don Adler, remembering from my first time reading this book, is a really shitty husband. So... <laughs> 
I'm curious to be reminded of how shitty he is. I was planning on giving an update after every single husband, but have I? That's the question. <laughs> okay, I think I said what I thought of Don Adler. He's just a shitty person. But then we had gullible Mick Riva. And this is the husband of whose offspring we will be following in Malibu Rising. I don't know if that was a correct sentence, but whatever. And he was actually not that amazing. <laughs> Without giving away any spoilers, he was kind of like using Evelyn while she was also using him for something. So I don't know, man, like Evelyn is also sometimes not really doing the correct things, but I always feel like Evelyn owns up to it. Like she knows she's using people and she just like freely admits to it if that gets her to where she wants to be. And now I'm on page 182. We're almost on to Clever rex north and we shall see what he has in store for us because i don't remember <laughs> okay i curled my hair and in the meantime i listened more to the seven husbands evelyn yugo oh my god just this whole rereading experience makes me realize that this is indeed one of my favorite books of all time. And I feel a little bit unoriginal with that opinion, but whatever, it's just such a good book. So I finished reading the relationship with Rex North. It wasn't anything super special. Now I think we're on to my favorite part, the most beautiful part, and also the most heartbreaking one, which is called Brilliant, Kind-Hearted, and Tortured Harry Cameron. This book is like 380-ish pages and I have 140 left and this is gonna be the most painful part of the book so I'm kind of trying to mentally prepare myself for all the emotions. <laughs> so you guys, I just finished the part where Harry Cameron is one of Evelyn Hugo's husbands. And like I said, it was very beautiful and really heartbreaking, which I don't know, makes it even worse. But right now I'm gonna go on to disappointing Max Gerard. And I know the story is only gonna like become even more sadder and like just, it will play with my emotions and I'm not ready for it. Also my camera's dying, so I feel like this is a good sign for for me to read more of this story and probably maybe finish it today. As you guys saw, I finished my reread and I'm not okay. <laughs> Just the emotions. Oh my god. This reread has confirmed that this is maybe my all-time favorite book. Taylor Jenkins Reid writes such realistic and complex characters. The story of Evelyn Hugo and her life in general, her loved ones, the losses that she's had, it's just so painful and so raw. Taylor Jenkins Reid is a genius, okay? If you haven't picked it up yet, please do so. It is just so incredibly gorgeous. Wow, just wow. It is still one of my absolute favorite novels of all time. Well, all of a sudden I became a New Yorker. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm doing the accent any good right now, but okay. I've said it before, Evelyn Hugo is such a flawed character. She does not shy away from that as well. Like she knows when she's doing a shitty thing, but she kind of like owns up to it. That doesn't make it any good or any less bad, but it is very just intriguing to read about. I absolutely adored the setting of this novel, like the time period, but also being in old Hollywood and seeing also how toxic that place is. I do wish though, perhaps, that this novel focused a little bit more on the beauty standards of Hollywood, about how you need to be thin and how you need to be beautiful and you shouldn't have any wrinkles. And I think that that would be just a great discussion in general. The ending of this book always just like breaks my heart. Everything that Evelyn has to go through, all the losses that she encounters in her life. Harry Cameron is absolutely one of my favorite characters in this book. He is just... <sighs> amazing <laughs> and such a good friend to Evelyn Hugo like he always has her back and they care so much for each other and their friendship is just so wonderful to see the forbidden love aspect of the story is just so beautiful and so touching and I want like everyone to read this book because it's just so beautiful but now that I finished that I will be picking up Malibu Rising oh my god so excited <laughs> 
we follow the offspring of famous singer Mick Riva. So we follow Nina, who is the eldest of the four siblings, and she's kind of like the caretaker of the bunch. Then we have brothers Jay and Huck. One of them is a very famous surfer as well. And like, I didn't say it, but Nina is a surfer and a model. One of the two brothers is a surfer and the other one is a photographer. And the youngest one is Kit. They all really love to surf. They live in Malibu. It is a super summery, beachy setting. So I truly think this is a perfect summer read. And what the Riva siblings do is that at the end of each summer, they throw this super big extravagant party. All these famous people come in. And by the end of this year's party, the Riva house will have gone up in flames. And the story is told in like a 24 hour time period, I would say, like leading up to the party. And then once the party start until the end of the party so it's kind of like a build up to the party and then all these things happen <laughs> today I have my birthday live show because tomorrow I'm turning 22 yes <laughs> but I have read around 60 pages of Malibu rising and first of all I want to say that I already feel like this one will be another heart-hitting novel. The setting is already described so beautifully and I personally love the summer, it's my favorite season. I also love the beach and I also personally scuba dive or like I have scuba dived, it's been four years almost. But I just love the ocean and swimming in general and if you love that too, I think that you will really enjoy the setting and just the whole summery vibe of Malibu rising and I am looking forward to getting more into it. So if I'm like, let's say maybe halfway through or something, I will give you another update about how I'm feeling about the book. I'm just really excited. You guys, it is time for a Malibu Rising reading update because yesterday I reached or almost reached page 200. So I'm officially over halfway through the book and oh my God, let me put you down. I already cried at page 150, which I don't know what that promises for the next 160 pages. I feel like this is an emotional roller coaster that I'm just like not ready for. And I'm also trying to keep track of like the trigger warnings that I am coming across. I won't be able to like pick up maybe on all the trigger warnings, but until so far, I would definitely say alcohol addiction is a very, very prominent one in this story. And also with Nina, you definitely see like eating disorder or like, I don't know if that's like the correct word for it, but she has to really watch her weight because she is a famous like surfing surfer model. For instance, that the family is eating fries and then Nina is only eating tomatoes because she doesn't want to eat carbs to stay thin. And if you are triggered by things like that, I'd say do not pick up this book because that is definitely mentioned in here a couple of times already. So I am on page 198 and I just started part two of the story and we are like leading up to their annual summer party so right now the party is really about to start and all these siblings are going through their own struggles but it is a very tragic story is what i can tell until so far and those are kind of my non-spoilery thoughts because I don't want to give away any of like the backstory of the family or what the characters are really going through. I think that's something that you really need to experience for yourself. This is not like a first person told story, if I can say it like that, but you do kind of follow the perspectives of the Riva siblings, especially in the first half leading up to the party. But you also get to hear their backstory of how Mick Riva, their father, met their mother, how their childhood was. It is very devastating. There is a lot of talk about like alcohol addiction. So that is definitely something that you need to look out for if you are triggered by that. I will leave, by the way, all the trigger warnings in the description box down below because there are plenty of for these books. They are not like just light and fluffy contemporaries that you just read <laughs> without any trigger warnings. The story of June, of their mother, is just so heartbreaking and got me crying already at like page 150. And I did not expect to be that emotional early on in the story. So when I was reading this book at the beginning, I felt like, oh my God, this is gonna be another new favorite Taylor Jenkins read book. But then we had the build up to the party. And after the party starts, you don't only follow the perspective of the Riva siblings anymore, which I really enjoyed and was really invested in. But sometimes you also get little bits and pieces from the party from other famous people's 
perspectives. Wow, that was very difficult to say. <laughs> and that I wasn't a super big fan of, but I just felt like there were too many little short stories from different perspectives and it did really sketch the ambiance of the party. So it did do that very well. It showed everything that was going on. People having like gangbangs, okay, not gangbangs, but like people having sex in swimming pools or doing drugs in closets or having sex in closets, sniffing cocaine in the kitchen. Like it really got out of hand but I missed reading solely from the perspectives of the siblings. It is truly a book about family and about the love for each other but also especially because the Riva siblings have such an estranged relationship from their father. Setting boundaries for yourself, coming up for yourself and trying to be okay with having an estranged father and choosing for yourself. So that is a very difficult subject to read about and I feel like Taylor Jenkins Reid did a good job with it, but if I had to choose my favorite Taylor Jenkins Reid book, it is definitely not Malibu Rising. If I had to make a top three right now, it would be The Seven Husbands, then it would be Daisy Jones and the Six, which I also loved, and then Malibu Rising. And all three of these books have in common that they like are set in, I believe like Los Angeles and like the Hollywood setting. And I do really enjoy reading those types of books. I am noticing that. I would still probably give The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo a five out of five stars. And I think Malibu Rising a four. Yeah, I think so because it was still super beautiful but I did enjoy the first half of the story a bit more than the second half mainly due to all of those different perspectives which kind of threw me off. But I would highly recommend for you to pick up Malibu Rising especially during the summer times because it talks a lot about surfing, about being on the beach and it is just beautiful and wonderful to read about. If you can't really go on vacation right now you absolutely have to pick up this book. So I really really enjoyed reading these two books. I hope that you liked seeing my experience and liked hearing my opinion about it. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking up Malibu Rising or maybe The Seven Husbands or another Taylor Jenkins read book. Like her work is amazing. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!